Thank you, Jesus. You know something? Today I learned something from God. The Lord spoke to me something today. Actually, we read one chapter of the Bible every week together. So this week is this week is uh, Luke chapter 1. So we were reading Luke chapter 1 together. And as I read Luke chapter 1, the Lord spoke to me. And uh, I'm encouraged. I'd like to share this encouragement to you. That in this Luke chapter 1, it records of this couple. Both of them love God. How many of us love God? Lift up your hands. Okay, we all love God. So when you love God, God will also love you. Yes or no? God also God loves, loves us first. Amen. Even love Amen. Amen. Actually, God's love is 100%. Sometimes our love can be 50%. <laughs> and then uh, God, I don't feel love, I don't love. Why? Because I have a message for you tonight. Are you living cost driven? If you live your life cost driven, I believe after tonight, when you know the truth, you'll find that the world is a better place. Do I have a good amen? Okay, but before I go to the world, I just centered a bit. You know, this couple, both of them are so old, about I think 60 plus, 70 plus. They actually have got a desire. They want to have a children, but they don't have, but they just, uh, yeah, and we are already so old, so uh, don't, no children, uh, so, so, okay, okay lah, after all, we are already so old. The Bible records that they, both of them left, live their life righteous and uh, honoring the Lord. One day, the husband was serving before God. In other words, he was worshipping the Lord. He was, at that time, of standing in God's presence, worshipping the Lord. And you know what happened? When he worshipped the Lord, angels stood before him and said to him, Do not fear. The Lord has heard your prayer and the Lord will answer your prayer. Your wife will give birth to a son. You know something? When we enter into God's presence and worship him, God will fulfill your heart's desire. Do I have a good amen? amen? You may, look, you may think that it is impossible. We are already so old. You may, it may look impossible, but there is nothing that the Lord cannot do. Do I have a good amen? amen? So the Lord said to this couple, you will have a child and you will call the child John. So when we come into the house of God and worship the Lord, just like today Michael said, he was packing, 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 and then suddenly the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Go to church, go to church. He put everything aside and he come to church today. Pack everything already. I'll pack everything already. Oh, okay. Then he come to church. Uh, he put God first priority. My our friend, brother Emmanuel, he, he, he has got a um, beautiful show at 4 o'clock, the Hindi dancing show. Wow, he want to watch. But he said, no, no, no. Put everything aside. Worship the Lord. So when you put everything aside and worship the Lord, I believe. God will fulfill your heart's desire. Something good, something powerful, something joyful is coming your way. Do I have a good amen? amen? You honor the Lord, I believe the Lord will also honor you. Amen. You give Him your time, I believe the Lord will multiply your time. Do I have a good amen? amen. You lift up, lift Him up in worship. Do you know that when you come to church, huh, you are proclaiming to the, your friends, your family members, your children, your neighbors, people around, that the Lord is your God. Do you know that? Do you know that when you come to church, people around you are seeing, wow, you have God in your life. Wow, you are worshipping the Jehovah God. Wow, you are going to church. Wow, wow, you have worshipped the Lord. And the Lord in turn will cause you to be blessed in such a way that they will see the power of God and they will say, I also want to believe in that God. Do I have a good amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Are you leaky? Let us read one verse. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Okay, brother Jeffrey, do you have enemies in life or not? Anyone did harm to you before or not? No, uh, let's say if you have an enemy in your life, how do you feel? Well, we try to be friendly. Try to be friendly, yeah. Uh. Will you fight back or not? Will you attack or not? 
<laughs> uh, sometimes enemy, you know, to us Christian, uh, we don't have enemies. Yes or no? Or everybody, we are our we we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principality and power. Everyone, we are not enemy. We love everyone, but our enemy is Satan. The, that is our enemy. He come to cause problems, cause difficulty. Yes or no? But uh, sometimes when we are not careful, we tend to. Sometimes someone may say something negatively to you. Someone may do some bad things, whether deliberately or accidentally. You get offended, and then you think that that person is your enemy, especially sometimes in the office, your colleague or what, they may not be supporting you, so you think that they are your enemy. But tonight I want to share with you a truth, that you may know the truth, that the truth of God's words will cause you to suddenly be promoted to your place of divine destiny. Are you ready? Yeah. I believe after tonight, when you go back home, after the service, you will have a new understanding new perspective that will open up heavens in your life and bring blessings and goodness like never before. Are you ready? Yes. If you are ready, say Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now, Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Jesus said this, But I say to you, Love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Do you know that the Lord wants you to do good to others? Wants you to respect everyone. Do you know that when you lift up the fallen, when you love the unlovable, when you give to the poor, when you help those who are in needs, when you are kind and generous, you are willing and obedient, do you know that you are receiving an open heaven? The world will be a better place. People around you, you are receiving unprecedented favor. God opens up your heart and your mind. You are receiving from heaven directly. Are you with me? God, Jesus said this. But I say to you, you see, this world, its language is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Yes or no? Right or not? You do harm to me, I do harm to you. You do nice to me, I do nice to you. Right or not? Yes or no? I once heard, okay, uh, that was a period of time I was driving taxi. So I talked to passenger and I also uh, bring forth Jesus into their life. I actually brought two person to Christ and uh, two person to their knees and uh, one person to use the name of Jesus. And I uh, heard this young lady, she was sharing to me. She said that she is a very nice lady. But don't make me angry. Don't step on my toe. And I will show you my true color. Do you think I'm easy to be booty one night? <laughs> an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But let us learn God's way. Learn his principle. And when we know God's way, we receive from heaven. They have a good amen. Amen. You will be, there are times when we will be relating to difficult people. But with God's way, knowing his truth, these difficult people will become our right hand man and left hand man. Are you with Amen. me? And that was what happened to King David. King David was living his life in the Abdullam cave. He was relating to difficult people. Do you know that difficult people are? Eh? Are actually vulnerable people because they have struggle they have challenges and they are difficult in because of this struggle in them that cause them to be difficult but when you relate to them with the words of Jesus they will be your right hand man and left hand and they will support you all the way are you with me yes. and that was what happened to King David King David did it God's way and one day while he was so thirsty and he desired to have a drink, two of them risked their life to get the drink from them. I believe 
you know difficult people ah they may have been received a lot of rejection yes or no receive a lot of condemnation unfair treatment they are struggling on the inside but here comes you and you love them because you have received the love of God. just our sister Mary she said God loved us first when God loved us first and when we receive the love of God we are able to love other people Amen. yes or no yes. so when today, after service, Michael Singh come up to me, Pastor Moses, uh, you, uh, you never put your shoe properly. You, uh, your, 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 your shirt, uh, you never wear properly. You, uh, you uh, Brother Singh, I love you. God bless you. you know. uh, love the unlovable. You know what? The love of God in you will go forth and he will speak a message like never before to this person. You are actually blessing that person. That person will be restored that person will be attracted to you. Agree or not? And you continue to love people, love the unlover in that way, you will have a lot of supporter. Amen. You, will a lot, uh, you will have a lot of friends. That's why God wants us to love the unlovable. Do good to others. Never, never do bad to others. Never, never make things difficult for people. You know, Angeline and myself have been married for how many? How long now? Uh, almost 30 years. My eldest daughter is now 25. Almost 30 years. You know, Angeline never made things difficult for me. <laughs> but I do make things difficult for people. <laughs> I do make things difficult. Maybe I may not be such a nice person, you know. And uh, my training as a lawyer sometimes also tends to be a bit, you know, uh, not straightforward, you know. Uh, uh, so, uh, when I see Angeline never make things difficult for me, then at times I felt, wow, why is he treating me so good? So I begin to realize, Jesus do not want us to make things difficult for people. So if you have an attitude of not making things difficult for people, you will realize, hey, be you, you will attract So somehow this part of me caused me to think, hey, I'm not going to live my life that way. So I'm not going to make things difficult for people. So I change. So in the end, I see that, hey, actually people are more easier to get along with. You make things difficult for people, you find that things are more difficult. Sometimes you want to get things done, you somehow sense that difficulty. But when you don't make things difficult for people, you realize that things can actually be done in a very smooth and easy way. Are you with me? So, don't do good to others. Respect everyone. When you respect people, people will respect you. When you speak rudely, when you speak, when you speak unkindly, you are actually turning away blessing. People, God can use people to bless you. God can use people to promote you. When you respect people, you are actually increasing attraction in your life. One day, someone will be attracted to you and someone will bless you like never before. Are you with me? Respect people. Do good to others. Lift up the fallen. People may, people may be injured. People may be sad. Always lift them up. You know, when I was younger, uh, 16 or 17 years old, my sister invited me to know Jesus. I accepted. I became a Christian at that time. Um, after that, I was on fire. So I decided to, you know, be for, for the first time to, to live my life differently. So I always, always like to encourage people in the Lord. And then I saw myself, you know, uh, lifting people. So I will ask this friend, how are you spiritually? And uh, the person will just share to me some uh, life issue. And I have that uh, strength and the desire to want to encourage this person in the Lord. And you know what? I realized that when you have the habit of lifting people, uh, you are actually lifting yourself. And you begin to see yourself more joyful, more hopeful, more confident, and, and that spirit uh, has driven me today 
that I have that faith and confidence to, to, to become a lawyer. Amen. Amen. So when you lift people up, you're actually lifting yourself. Don't have the don't have the uh, uh, you 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 will you will there's a verse in the Bible that says he who refresh others will himself be refreshed. So when you God wants you to lift people up, don't don't tear people down. Don't say bad things about other people. This person ah uh, no good like Angelina. Actually she's not very good. Like. She's not a good person. Eh. Angelina, you see her like that like that lah. She's no good like. Don't 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 put people down. Don't say bad things about it. Angelina, she's very good like. Eh. Wow. Amen. It's such a blessing to have Angelina. And how how does it feel like? You know, it is actually speak whether speak well of you or speak bad of you. Whatever you speak, Angeline is still Angeline. Yes or no? She's still her. But it's how are you perceiving people? So don't speak back about other people. Love the unlovable. Give to the poor. If you are able to give, give. You know why? Because when you give, uh, you realize that you are not lacking. You may not need to give a lot. If you can give a lot, Better still shows that you are more capable. But when you give, ah, you know you're actually receiving. When you give, ah, when you give, ah, something in you opens up to receive from the divine something. So when you give, you are receiving. Give and it shall be given to you. Help those in need. You know, the other time I was sitting down in a food court, Kopitiam food court. And I saw this person, uh, the hair seems like a wig to me. You know, the hair looks very, very funny. Like. So I start to, to observe this person. I was free, I was just sitting there waiting for Angelina, so very free. And I look at this man, and the hair uh, is like, not really hair, it's a wig, and it's a long hair. Quite long. But I look at him like a man, uh, quite muscular. Like. But he's wearing, then the hair is so long. Then I saw him wearing skirt. And then I was like, is he a man or a lady? I also don't know. <laughs> he, he looks like a man and he's so muscular and the face, skin texture is like a man. And he wear, but he's wearing a wig so you can't tell. So it's like a long hair. Then he wears skirt, then wear woman dress. And he was walking, walking, walking. But obviously I can see that he's a little bit like, uh, like some problem. Got some problem, like those people with problem. So they don't behave normally. So I saw him going around and then start asking people for money. So I was thinking, well, this person uh, not an easy person, you know, asking people for money. Must have some problem. So he went to the next table, asked for money at the table. <laughs> Drive him away. Then after that, he walked towards my table. Then he asked me for asked me for money. So I was thinking like, well, God wants to give or don't give. Uh. God give or don't give. Uh. Ask me for money. Like. Okay, la, never mind. La. Uh, today I'm happy, la. I give a bit, la. never mind. So I opened my wallet, I was thinking of giving uh, coins, but I got no coins. I was thinking of giving, okay, la, chin chai, la, two dollar. But I don't have two dollar, only one ten dollar. Wow, God, give or don't give, la. ten dollar, la. God, give or don't give. La. So I was prompted, okay, la, never mind, la. just give. La. I, I, I a little bit uh, sympathy on him. So I give, take out ten dollar, I give to him ten dollar. Wow, oh, I see him so happy, you know. Wow, well, suddenly took out the ten dollar, put on the pocket, and he walked. Wow, well, begin to be very happy, and then start walking away. So I realized, ah, uh, I have given this man joy. I has given him joy. He may have received a lot of rejection. He may have a lot of difficulties in life. That's why I do not know men or women. <laughs> you know, begin to you know struggle on his identity, and can see him also like maybe you know, no money and all that. So with ten dollar, uh, I can see hope in him. So I begin to realize that uh, when you give joy to people, when you give love to people, when you are kind to people, when you are generous people, God promise you that when you He will give you double, He promise you that He will bless your life. And that's why He say, love your enemy, bless those who curse you. It is easy to love people when people love you. It is easy to be kind when people are kind to you. But it will make a difference when those who treat you unkind, you are kind to them. You know what? You are winning a favor. When people do not love you, you love them. 
you are opening up doors for supernatural, for extraordinary. You are winning people's heart. Whatever you do, when you love the unlovable, when you love your enemies, when you treat, do good to those who hate you, one day you will realize people are doing to do good to you that you have never imagined will happen. Are you with me? Yes. Just like King David. Okay, so live cause minded. Do you have a cause in your life? How are you living your life? Are you living your life working very hard for money? Are you living your life pursuing your dreams but couldn't care less of your environment? Tonight, I want to encourage you. Have a cause in your life. Live your life for something. For a good cause. Live your life to honor the Lord. Live your life. Some people, you live your life for your family. You want to earn enough to supply for your family. Some people, you live your life to build God's kingdom. And just like Angeline and myself, we have committed ourselves to Rock of Salvation Church. We have committed ourselves to do whatever we can. Every Saturday, we will be here and we will share the word of God, whatever the Lord puts in our heart. We have committed ourselves to Rock of Salvation Church. Do you have a cause in your life? Ask God for a cause. Why? Because your crown is found in your cause. When you have a cause in your life, when you are a blessing to other people, when you are doing good, when you go the extra mile, when you are helping, I, I, I know of a sister, she supported the church in finances. And because of that cause, God has prospered her business. I know of a sister, she worked as a stockbroker. She, her cause is to support God's kingdom. And you know what? God amazingly increased her shares, whatever investment she made, she received blessing. Your motivation will be different. Okay. Live your life cost-driven. Jesus said a few things, but I just want to point out one thing tonight. Okay, just want to point out one thing tonight. Let us turn Matthew chapter turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. Matthew chapter 25. Okay. It's a a few verses. Okay, I'll, I'll read for you. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. When is this day? When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. When is this day? I believe maybe the world comes to an end. Jesus is now enthroned. Yes or no? Or maybe when you depart this world and then suddenly you open your eyes. Hey, hey, now I'm no longer in the earth. Now I'm in another world. Change of address. A change of address. You realize Jesus is on the throne. Right now. Then what will he do? Verse 32. All the nations gathered before him. Wow, so many people. We are all gathered before Jesus. And he will separate them one from another. Jesus will do one thing. He will start to give number tag. You are number one. You are number two. You are number one. You are number two. He will start to give number tag. He will divide. Okay, how does he divide? He will separate them one from another. As a shepherd divide his sheep from the goats. So, when you, meet, when you meet with Jesus, Jesus will divide. Okay. How does he divide? This is what he will do. He will set the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. 
the lot will divide. Okay, the sheep come to my right, the goats come to my left. He will divide. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I believe right now, the Lord is blessing us. But when we are out of the world, when we are with him, the Lord will also bless us with the reward of what we have done on earth. Are you with me? Now, verse 35. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. All the things that you are doing good to people, God is taking, Jesus is taking account of them. Why? Because whatever you do, you are bearing testimony in his name. Because you are a child of the Most High God. Last time before I was a Christian, I used to fight with people and I win. Nobody said anything. But now I'm a Christian. If I fight with anyone, uh, the news will come up. Pastor of Rock of Salvation Church fight with people and he lose. <laughs> uh, without the mask. You know. Whatever you do, uh, it is different. Why? Because you have the name of God. And then Jesus will reward you. When you love the unlovable, when you lift the fallen, when you give to the poor, Jesus said, over here, he said, you are doing it unto him. But then, and then Jesus said, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Verse 37, Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Oh, when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? Verse 40, And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, In as much as you did it to one of these least of these my brethren, you did it to me. You did it to me. Jesus said you did it to me. So Jesus is involved in whatever action that you do. When I was practicing as a lawyer, I actually represented a client to fight against another group of lawyers representing another client. And uh, we are representing a bigger corporation that, client, that lawyers are representing a smaller uh, family business. What happened was that our corporation was suing that company for their un, un, unable, un, unable to pay rent to our client. So we sued them. We actually won and they had to pay, uh, pay compensation to our client, but they couldn't. So the next thing that we as lawyers would advise to do is to sue them bankrupt. So we actually, they sue them, they become bankrupt. Then uh, possess whatever asset they have. Because of our action, husband and wife went into great struggle and they actually divorced each other. And then family broke down. Uh, had all kinds of problems after that. Then the uncle who are involved in the business also uh, began to receive the stress and the uncle had one machine. We also sued to take that machine and then uh, the uncle's livelihood was depending on that machine. So he actually filed a document to retain that machine. So there is the plea of interpreter summon. So he came to court for hearing. I was representing our client so I went to court for hearing for that. So I saw the uncle after that, wow, he looks very haggard. You know, looks very tired, very haggard. And then I uh, went to court for hearing. And this is inside closed door. Is my sermon recorded? So after that, uh, for the first time, I saw how stress can cause someone to deteriorate that fast. So I decided to relent, not to add some more stress to people. 
and then uh, do some good to other people. Then after that, I begin to realize when you do good to people, you are a happier man. When you fight and win, you may not necessarily be happy. And uh, following God's word, you receive life. If I follow the law, I may not receive life. So I decided to quit. Today I become a pastor, no longer Amen. a lawyer. <laughs> My daughter wants to be a lawyer. I didn't advise her to be a lawyer. So today she didn't, didn't become a lawyer. But we have the law of the law. We have the common law. So let us follow what the law of the law says. Jesus promised you, you have life and life more abundantly. Do I have a good amen? amen? Okay, now he says here again, 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drinks. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they, will, they also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. And these will go away into the everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So, Jesus said something. How are you living your life? Doing good to people. Sometimes you may not realize a little good things you do, it may not mean a lot, but the result can be great promotion for you. King David lived his life as an ordinary person like you and I. He lives as a shepherd. Shepherd means ordinary person like you and I. David was not well treated in his family, if you may read the Bible. His father didn't even remember him when Samuel came to anoint his children. When David spoke to her, his siblings, his siblings are all very unkind to him. Blame him, ridicule him, and certainly did not include him in any family activity. So he was like a rejected child. How does it feel like to be living your life as a rejected child? Sometimes you can feel lonely, unhappy, yes or no? Angry, yes or no? You may feel unfair. You may have negative thinkings towards your brothers. Yes or no? As a rejected child. One day, his father asked David to bring food to his older, other older siblings who are in the battlefield serving their national service. David could easily say, why must I go and bring food to them? They have not been kind to me. Brother Young, do you have siblings? If someone treated you that, like that, very unkind to you, will you want to bring food for them? Give la. Give la. Usually we give la. can give give la, can do do la. But sometimes you may not feel like want to do. Why should I do? They treat me so bad. But your give la, this little bit of give la, although it may look little, but you know what? Because you decided to do good, your promotion will come. Your healing will come. Your open heaven will come. David, just like Brother Yang, give la, do la, chin chai la. <laughs> just do it. Just do it la, wearing Nike shoe. It's a promotion, uh, a promotion. Uh, uh, David went. David went and brought food to the brother. You know how did the brother treat him? You know how did the brothers spoke to him? Let us read the verse together. Let us let us read First Samuel. Okay, if you have your Bible, let us turn to the verse together. First Samuel. Okay. First Samuel chapter seventeen. First Samuel chapter seventeen. Ok, 
Okay, First Samuel chapter 17, verse 28, I read now. Now, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the man, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, saying, You know, David brought food for him. You know, he didn't even say thank you, but was unhappy and said to David, With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and your insolence of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. You know, say this kind of thing to David. Will it, will it cause David to be very, very hurt? I bring food for you and say this kind of words to me. But David turned aside. And David said, Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Now, when you do a little things to know, because David was willing to bring food to the brother, David heard about Philistine were attacking Israelites. He heard about it. And he turned around. Is there not a cause? You know, our God has all the answer. Do I have a good amen? Our God is greater than every problem. Do I have a good amen? Our God is able to bring victory in our life. When you live your life cost driven, cost minded to know that you are living your life as a child of the Most High God. You are living your life honoring God, wanting to bless Him. You are living your life because you are a child of the Most High God. You are doing good to people. Because you are a child of the Most High God, you ching chai la, do la, never mind la. Because you are a child of the Most High God, you give $10 to the man lady. You do not know it's a man or a lady. You live your life cost driven. You know what? Suddenly there is this fear coming out of David. Suddenly he was anointed. He was empowered. And he said this. Who is this giant? Who is this Goliath? Is there not a cause? The Lord will surely bring him down. You know what happened? That day he was promoted. And he became the king of Israel. From shepherd to the king. Ordinary into extraordinary. Why? Simply because he was living his life cost-minded. Cost-driven. Is there not a cost? Are you living your life as a child of the Most High God? Yes. The doctor may have given you negative report. Because you are a child of the Most High God, your report of the Lord will come. Do I have a good amen. amen? Are you going through life unhappy because this person has treated you unkindly, said negative words, or not treating you right? But because you are a child of the Most High God, you choose to obey what Jesus chose to do it God's way. Follow the path of life. You love that person. You forgive. You, you, you do good to that person. You know what? Your crown will come. Your promotion will come. Unprecedented favor will come. People will be attracted to you. Do I have a good amen? amen? People will go the extra mile and do good to you because you choose to love your enemy. Do I have a good amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, another thing is also because you choose to focus on Jesus, Jesus will bless your life. Let us read one verse. Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1. Haggai is the O from the okay from the Old Testament. Haggai chapter 1 verse 6, 7, 8 Okay, I read for you eh? Okay, You have sown much and bring in little okay, Have we ever experienced that? Eh? Like you work very hard But you never receive a lot You eat 
but do not have enough. You drink and you are not filled with that drink. Have you ever experienced life that way? You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. He who earns wages, earn wages to put it into a bag with holes. Money just one hand in, one hand out. Like things like happening that way. Verse 7, the Lord says, That says the Lord of hosts, consider your way. So tonight I want to encourage you to consider your way. And this is what the Lord says Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. Are you living your life cost driven? Because you are a child of the Most High God. Because you chose to believe in what Jesus said. You decided to do good, be a blessing, not a burden. You decided to go the extra mile, not being calculative and picky. You take taxi. Uncle, your taxi fare is $5, $4.90. You give to the uncle $10. You are expecting $5.10 change. But the uncle forgotten, give you only $5. Wow, you run after the taxi. Then you chase back your 10 cent or 10 cent from the uncle. Are you calculative or are you uncle? Never mind. I can give you ten dollar. Keep the chain. Let uncle be happy. Amen. Amen. Are you being generous or are you being kind? Are you building the kingdom of God? Go about saying a blessing, say some kind words to someone, extend your hand. When you do good. When you lift up the fallen, when you love the unlovable, God is saying to you, consider your way. Go up to the mountains and bring woods. Build the temple that I may take pleasure in it. You look for much, but indeed it comes to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruin. While every one of you ruin runs his own house. We cannot live our life self-centered. If you live your life self-centered, there will only be more problems, more difficulties. It will never be enough. You must live your life a blessing to others. God has created us that way. God did not create us self-centered. God has created us as a community. God has created us with family. Are you with me? Do you agree? When you love, that is only when you receive love. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew and the earth withhold the fruit. For I call forth a drought on the land and the mountains on the grain and the new wine and the oil. On whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, on it all, the labor of your hands. Now the Lord is saying to you, consider your ways. So have you received something tonight? Yes. In closing, I would like to share with you about this lady uh, I want to ask some sister here sister Mary Fu let us imagine now you are very young and beautiful uh, very attractive uh, you bling bling your eyes a bit now the man will come after you already uh, no problem at all uh, so uh, one day uh, someone proposed to you this handsome young guy wow, full of Promise and full of character. So you, fought, you fell in love with him and you married him. Okay, you have a happy, uh, fulfilling relationship, and, uh, and, to, and and you stayed together with him and your mother-in-law, his mother, and then uh, also your father-in-law. But something unfortunate happened. Something, okay, uh, your. Your mother-in-law has also another son, also married, also. So now you have got this new family. Your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your husband, your brother-in-law, and sister-in-law, this new family, okay? Now, something happened to this family. An accident happened. Your father-in-law died, passed away, left with mother-in-law. And another tragic thing happened. Your brother-in-law also died. Uh, and your husband also died. So left with you, your sister-in-law, and your mother-in-law. 
so quite sad lah, quite sad. Your mother-in-law obviously uh, was very sad. So your mother-in-law decided to, because she actually came from another country, and uh, she decided to go back to her country. At that time, yeah, actually you married to this young man also not long, like only one year, and that had the accident happened. Your mother-in-law spoke to you and your sister-in-law. Said that, you know, both of you are young and uh, beautiful and have got good prospect. Why don't you go back to your uh, family and I go back to my country? Your sister-in-law, the other sister, have decided to go back to her family because she's also young and beautiful, come back. Now, left with you. What do you think will you do? Will you go back to your family or will you stay on to your mother-in-law and follow her to her country? Her country is not a, it's not a very uh, prosperous country and also she's also not rich. What will you do? <laughs> I, I know you're referring to Ruth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You know that. <laughs> this is one way of testing. The <laughs> okay. Then, then, then. Uh, unless you do not know the story, uh, then we can be able to see what's your opinion. Is it easy to follow your mother-in-law and go back to a foreign land? Not easy, right? Is it easier to go back to your family and stay with your family and start off a new relationship? It might be easier that way, right? But you know what? Ruth decided to do good to others. Decided to stay committed. Not self-seeking, but serve other people. When you have an attitude of serving other people, you know what? Something greater is coming your way. When you have an attitude of serving others, regardless of whether what status you are, sometimes as father, I serve our children. I serve them. And uh, uh, you realize that they pick up from you. They are also in turn serving you. And you enjoy. You enjoy. Rather than you demand. And then next time they demand from you, wow, you demand from me. Then you start to scold them. You cannot do that to your father here and there. You realize that you have more problems and difficulty. When you serve others, Something greater is coming your way. Have an attitude of serving. And when you serve, uh, you have the faith to do bigger things. So Ruth decided to follow the mother-in-law. And we know the story. What happened? She was greatly blessed by the Lord. So tonight, may I encourage you, choose to do God's way. Choose to love. In a very unlovable situation. Sometimes when Angeline and myself in the past, sometimes when we quarrel or argue, wow, it's very hard to talk really after that. But we decided to hold hands and pray and then ask, ask God to, uh, uh, to, to apologize to one another, hold hands and pray, and then decided to, you know, to, to forgive and then repent. And that helped us a lot. Today, we no, need, no longer need to do that. Why? Because we are not quarreling already. Today, we are saying, I love you, you love me. Amen. Uh, that is how I believe we will change our destiny. We will change our livelihood. We will change our relationship with people. And our children, when they said, see that happen, they are also learning from us. So now I see my children talking to each other. Last time when we quarrel, my children quarrel with each other. They pick up on the father and the mother. Now we agree and we are happy. They are also agree happy and they go shopping together. Last time they don't talk, don't play. Now they go shopping together. Which is better? I think it's better to see them in agreement and happiness rather than quarreling and arguing. Yes or no? Yes, right. So I believe in the same way. The Lord will bless us. In closing, I'd like to read for you one verse. And that verse, I believe, will stay with you and will bless your life. And this is the verse, verse of Jesus. Let us read Matthew chapter 5. Let us remember this verse. Matthew chapter 5. 
Okay, just now we read verse 44. The Lord Jesus said, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you. Okay, why? That you may be the son of your father, that you may be the child of the Most High God, for he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, send rain on the just and on the unjust. Verse 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collector do that. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than, than others? Don't even tax collector do that. Okay, this is the verse. Verse 48. Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. God wants you to be perfect. Perfect means what? God wants you to receive your divine destiny. God wants you to prosper in life. God wants you to be healthy and strong. God wants you to live out a full lifespan. Are you with me? Yes. So be perfect means what? Love the unlovable. Do good to those who may not be doing good to you. Respect people who may be rude to you. Don't need to follow them. Don't need to do what they are doing. Because you are a child of the Most High God. Lift up the fallen. Give to the poor. Be kind and be generous. Be perfect. Be perfect in, in this sense means no need to do what other people do. Do what Jesus do. And then he will reward you. On earth, your crown will come. Your promotion will come, just like David, just like Ruth. Your prosperity, your healing, your expansion will come. But when you go to heaven, Jesus will also reward you. Are you with me? Yes. Jesus is also the reward. Yeah. So those who receive, say Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'll pass the mic to Sister June, who will take us on in the collection of texts. 